One of the craziest Game of Thrones fan theories claims that Dario Naharis and Euron Greyjoy are the same person, and it's actually kind of possible. In A Storm of Swords, Dario Naharis is one of three captains of the Storm Crows, a mercenary company hired by Yunkai to defend the city from Daenerys Targaryen. Dario kills the two other captains and brings the company to Danny's side, helping to take Yunkai, then Marine. Dario is a great fighter and a great talker, arrogant, swaggering, and ruthless. He wears colourful Tairoshi clothes with a pointed blue beard, though HBO's Dario's look nothing like this. In any case, Danny falls for him, and the two become lovers in a relationship that represents the temptation of violence and vengeance, of fire and blood. Dario's always offering to kill people for Danny, like Jorah and his Hisdazo Lorak and the Great Masters. He suggests loosing her dragons on her enemies, and doing what she likes without care for responsibility or who might get hurt. Danny's horrified by his careless brutality, calls him a monster, but deep down thinks she's a monster too. Dario is the devil on Danny's shoulder, representing her darker side, so he's central to Danny's internal conflict in A Dance with Dragons. Throughout this book, while Danny stays to rule Marine, Dario is sent off on various missions. But at the end of Dance and the start of the Winds of Winter, Dario is a hostage of the Yunkai, while battle begins between Danny's forces, Yunkish forces, and some unexpected visitors, the Ironborn. Euron Greyjoy is brother to Balon, Victarion, and Aeron, and an uncle to Asher and Theon. He's a wild, scheming, dangerous man, a warrior and a manipulator, widely described as mad. After being exiled from the Iron Islands for raping or seducing Victarion's third wife, he spent several years killing and pillaging across Essos in his ship of mutes called the Silence. He claims to have been everywhere from Ashai to the ruins of Valyria, and has knowledge of magic and dragons, apparently having captured Piat Pri and his warlock buddies. In A Feast for Crows, Euron returns to the Iron Islands the day after Big Brother Balon's sudden death, and is elected King of the Islands on the promise that he will conquer Westeros for the Ironborn. After taking the shields, he sends Victarion and the Iron Fleet off to find Daenerys, so Euron can marry her and capture her dragons with the magic horn Dragonbinder. We're led to believe that meanwhile, Euron is raiding the Reach, but there's good reason not to believe that's true. Because Euron's not that interested in the Reach. He says he'd bring the Ironborn dragons, and they shout out for grapes. Grapes, as in the Reach. So his talk of taking the Reach, even of conquering Westeros, might be empty words to win the Ironborn. But even if Euron does intend to conquer, he clearly plans to do it with dragons. So why would he attack the Reach and risk the wrath of the Redwine fleet before he has dragons? There is some raiding going on along the Mando, but there's no clear evidence that Euron's a part of it. It's more likely that he's focusing on his primary goal, Danny and her dragons, which we're led to believe Euron leaves in the hands of Victarion. Victarion, who is dumb as a stump, is only good at fighting, knows nothing about magic or dragons, hates Euron, and plans to take Danny and her dragons for himself. Why would Euron trust Victarion with this job? Here's what might be going on. Euron follows the Iron Fleet to Marine, or gets there first, in disguise perhaps. He lets Victarion deal with the Yunkai, lets Victarion's men blow the Deadly Horn, which apparently kills whoever uses it. Then Euron can reveal himself and take Danny and her dragons. Because Dragonbinder brings dragons not to whoever blows the horn, but to the horn's master. Euron found the horn and is manipulating Victarion, surely making Euron the horn's master. So when Dragonbinder sounds, dragons will come to the Crow's Eye. Not in the Reach, but in Slaver's Bay. Using Victarion like this is exactly the sort of deception and manipulation that we should expect from the Crow's Eye, and having him turn up at Marine would be a pretty awesome dramatic reveal. So on to the theory. What evidence is there that Dario and Euron are the same person? For starters, they look pretty similar. They're both attractive, they both have smooth, pale skin, they both have beards. Dario were dyed blue beard, and we've already seen dyed blue beards used as disguises. They both have blue eyes, though Euron is said to have a black eye beneath his patch. Euron also has blue lips from drinking Shade of the Evening, which could wear off or be hidden, maybe. And Dario has a gold tooth, which could possibly be fake. Overall, they look quite similar. Dario and Euron also have very similar skills and personalities. They're both good talkers, good at convincing people. 
Euron talks his way onto the sea stone chair, and Dario talks his way into Danny's bed, both of which are cases of an outsider getting into a place they don't really belong through flattery, the giving of gifts, and overwhelming confidence. They both have a talent for mocking and belittling people. They're both endlessly bragging in fanciful, self-aggrandizing monologues, like Dario says he would tell you the names of all the men he has slain, but before he could finish, winter would come and go and come again. Euron says he's never known defeat, has never bent his knee, has sailed to a shy by the shadow and seen wonders and terrors beyond imagining. But beneath the bravado, both men are dangerous, brutal, men without conscience who kill like it means nothing. They both have a tendency to anger, and they both seem to share an interest in dragons. Euron's endlessly talking about them and plans to steal Danny's, while Dario brings up dragons many times for someone who only appears in a few chapters. There are weird connections in the show, too. In Season 3, Dario says he refuses to pay prostitutes, which is refusing to pay the gold price, which is an ironborn thing. Also, at one point, Dario describes a flower, his gift to Danny, as beautiful but poisonous. And we know that Euron's gifts are poisoned. But thirdly, and most maddeningly, in the show, Dario captures the ships of the Miranese navy. How many ships? You might ask. Ninety-three, your grace. Ninety-three ships. That is the same number of ships as Victarion leaves with to go to Marine in the books. This is not a coincidence, right? Either the writers of the show are fucking with us, or the fleet of ships that Dario gives Danny in the show are somehow equivalent to the fleet of ships Euron sends to Danny in the books. There are a bunch of different ways that could work, but either way, it's a strong connection between Dario and Euron. And there's more. Dario wears Tairoshi clothes and skillfully wields a Dothraki Iraq and a Moorish stiletto, which suggests he's pretty well travelled. We know Euron's been all over the world. And Dario has a gift for sleeping. He's able to sleep on horseback during storms, which is the sort of skill you'd learn spending years at sea. Dario rhetorically asks if he would steal from Danny, when Euron's plan is to steal dragons from Danny. And Dario and Euron both have lines describing men as meat. There are also symbolic connections, like Dario's mercenary company is called the Storm Crows, when Euron is repeatedly described as the Storm, and his nickname is Crow's Eye. The show changed Dario's company to the Second Sons, but for what it's worth, Euron is literally a Second Son. So Dario and Euron are similar in appearance and personality, and there are lots of little hints at a connection between the two. Nothing that proves they're the same person, but enough to suggest that there might be something here. So does it make sense for Dario to be a false identity of Euron? What does Euron get by pretending to be some random sellsword? Well, we know Euron wants to marry Danny and take her dragons. By playing the role of Dario, Euron has won Danny's love. She wants to marry him, says she'd give up her crown for him. This explains why Euron is so confident that Danny will marry him, which is ridiculous otherwise. Being Dario also allows Euron to get an insider's view of the situation in Marine and what the deal is with the dragons, which would all be very valuable information to someone planning to make a move there. Being Dario also works with Euron secretly being in Slaver's Bay. As Dario, he's a hostage of the Yunkai, so he just sits tired and waits for Victarion to use Dragonbinder, bringing a dragon to break Euron out of Yunkish custody so he can hop on the dragon, maybe kill Victarion while he waits for Danny to return to Marine on Drogon so Euron can be all like, Hey, it's a me, Dario. Your dragon seems to like me for some reason. Wanna go spread some fire and blood up in these slavers? Admittedly, assuming a false identity on the other side of the world might not be the best way to achieve all this, but it could make some kind of sense to a mind like Euron's, maybe. Does Dario equals Euron fit with what we know of Dario? Well, we don't know much about Dario. In the show, he says he's the son of a prostitute, and as far as we know, he has no family, no friends, no gods. What we do know is that he's treacherous. Dario first came to Danny by breaking contract with Yunkai and killing his colleagues. Jora warns Danny that Dario is not worthy of trust, that even his beard wears false colours. Danny rejects this, saying Jora's just jealously pushing men away from her, which is probably partly true, but in arguing that Jora's warnings are wrong, she lists them. Piatpri's a liar, Zaro's a schemer, Belwas a braggart, Arston an assassin. Thing is, Piat Pri is a liar, Zaro is a schemer, Belwas is a braggart, and while Barristan's not an assassin, he does deceive Danny. As Danny later admits, Jorah always gives good counsel, and Jorah's counsel is that Dario is untrustworthy. 
and Barriston agrees. Even Danny thinks Dario is treacherous. He might fit into the three mounts or three betrayals she has prophesied to suffer. But the bigger issue here is that Dario doesn't make sense as a person. We're meant to believe that Dario is this battle-hardened, self-serving mercenary who sides with whoever is going to win. So why is he sticking with Danny when she's surrounded by enemies and disease and ruin and other sellswords are abandoning her? Everyone seems to expect Dario to betray her, even Danny herself. Like, seriously, look at how many times Danny thinks that Dario will betray her. Why doesn't he? Dario claims that he loves Danny, but even Danny doesn't believe that. She says Dario's only interested in her because she's a dragon queen. Dario wants Daenerys for her power and her dragons. And, well, we do know someone else who wants to get into Danny's pants for her power and her dragons, don't we? Someone else who is treacherous, dangerous, gift-giving, sweet-talking, smooth-skinned and blue-eyed, of the storm and of the crow. Euron Greyjoy and Dario Naharis are very similar, and being Dario could help Euron, and the character of Dario doesn't make a lot of sense on his own. Dario equals Euron actually seems pretty believable. But let's address the elephant in the room. How could all this work? How can Euron and Dario be the same person when Dario is in Slaver's Bay and Euron's half a world away in the Iron Islands? Thing is, Dario spends most of a dance with dragons away from Marine, and we only actually see Euron a few times in A Feast for Crows. We don't know exactly how the timings of these two books line up, but based on the best guesses we have, Private Mage's timeline and the Boiled Leather Merged Reading Order, we can get a rough idea of how they fit together. At the start of A Feast for Crows, Euron has recently returned to the Iron Islands, and he stays there until the King's Moot in The Drowned Man. At this same time, in A Dance with Dragons, Dario is away on a mission to ally with the Lazarine, and Danny notices he's been away for a worryingly long time. By the way, Dario is given gold and treasure to give the Lazarine, and at the King's Moot that follows, Euron gives a bunch of gold and treasure to the Ironborn. Funny coincidence, right? So Dario gets back to Marine after the King's Moot, but he only stays long enough to have sex with Danny before he's sent away again in the same chapter. We see Euron on the shields a while after that, in the Reaver, and that's the last time we see Euron. We're then cryptically told by Macquaro that Euron is coming for Danny at the same time that Dario is sailing to Danny. So the times do seem to line up, though the absences are still kind of a problem. Euron leaving the islands after the King's Moot seems like a very bad idea. Shouldn't he be consolidating his power? And shouldn't Dario be leading the Stormcrows on their missions? There might be time for both, but if Euron is Dario, he's a very busy man. He's also very bloody quick. It's a long trip from the Iron Islands to Marine, and Euron slash Dario must have made it like four times in one book, albeit a very long book that is actually two books. There are a bunch of reasons why this speed is not a problem. Firstly, Euron is a pirate king who spent years on the sea sailing all over the world. If anyone can sail a ship fast, Euron Greyjoy can. Especially with the help of the warlocks and wizards he's hanging with. It's hinted several times that Euron uses magic to sail fast. Euron mockingly implies that he can command the winds and sail wherever he likes and never be becalmed. A later passage directly suggests that Euron controls the winds with blood magic. And we know Euron's ship's deck is soaked in blood. There's evidence that Melisandre's blood magic can command the winds, so why not Euron's? It seems likely that Euron is using magic to sail fast, and as best we know, Euron is never in Westeros at the same time that Dario is in Marine. So it does seem possible that Euron travels between Westeros and Slaver's Bay to play the role of both the Crow's Eye and the Storm Crow. But there are still problems. Like, if Dario is Euron, how does he keep his double identity a secret? Euron has a crew of mutes, but Dario has a company of mercenaries who he trusts as far as he can spit. 500 sellswords of uncertain loyalty who would notice that their captain keeps going off on long voyages, rather than, you know, doing his job and leading the company. And surely someone would notice Euron's infamous ship lurking near Marine, or reaving for supplies along the way. However the logistics work, there are lots of problems like this that make it very hard to believe that Dario equals Euron could be kept secret. So, where does this leave us? There are lots of little connections and similarities between Euron and Dario. Being Dario probably could fit into Euron's plan, and it would explain what Dario's deal is. 
It does seem possible that Euron could travel the world fast enough to play both parts, but it's hard to see how he could keep it secret. So based on what we know, Dario equals Euron does seem possible, but there's a simpler explanation. Dario and Euron are similar because they represent similar ideas of violence and self-interest and their conflict with compassion and honour and doing the right thing, which A Song of Ice and Fire is all about. Every character falls somewhere between two extremes. So in a world with thousands of characters, we can't assume that every suspicious similarity hides a secret identity. So Euron's plan can still work fine without him being Dario. And Dario might have his reasons for sticking with Danny. Maybe he really does love her in some way. Or maybe he's got something else going on that we'll find out about later. So as much as we'd all like to see Dario with an eye patch bursting out of Junkish custody on the back of Rhaegal high-fiving Danny on Drogon as they fly off to spread fire and blood across Slaver's Bay, the most reasonable conclusion is that Dario and Euron are probably not the same person. But it's still fun to think about. There are links to the timeline and the merged reading order in the description if you want to check those out. If you're not already aware, the Song of Ice and Fire subreddit and westerus.org are really cool places to discuss the Song of Ice and Fire. It's where most of these fan theories originate, so you should definitely have a look if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.